And this year at the fair, WCCO is honoring military families and their members, all while trying to set a world record. Yeah, it's a big deal. We'd love to get your help. Angela Davis is here now to explain uh, how it works. It's our More Than Names campaign. I'm so glad we're doing this, Angela. Yeah, and we're seeing a steady stream of people. When you come to the state fairgrounds, we want you to come inside the WCCO building and sign a panel. I can show it to you here. Sign a panel that will become part of a 102 foot by 76 foot flag that honors our troops. Now, if we are able to collect more than 150,000 signatures, we will make it into the Guinness Book of World Records. With a huge crowd walking through the fairgrounds each day between now and Labor Day, we should be able to reach our goal. Randy Sauter is a former Marine. People don't know what it's like to be gone and to serve. Uh, so these men and women that are gone right now, it's a huge sacrifice. Each time a panel fills up with names, a new one takes its place. They are starting to stack up. We've uh, we filled a few before the fair, and I mean, we filled up probably three or four today, and that's 768 signatures for every panel. We, we just have so many blessings and so many things to be thankful for, and this would be just one way to express my gratitude. Can't make it to the state fair? No problem. You can still sign the flag. Just use your phone or your home computer and go to WCCO.com slash flag. It'll take you to the More Than Names page. When you get there, fill out the form, and then you can sign your name using your finger. They're going to stitch all 323 together, and we're going to end up with a 102-foot by 76-foot flag. And then where does that go? Uh, we're hoping to unveil it at the Twins game during uh, the October 2nd, 3rd, or 4th series. And then after that, we're hoping it lives at Fort Snelling because it's going to weigh over 300 pounds. Yeah, that's going to be a big flag. So come on by the CCO building, sign the flag. We're also uh, working to raise some money for the, the Minnesotans Military Appreciation Fund, which supports the families of members of the military. We're going to be holding phone banks over the next few weeks for them, and then we're also going to be providing a way to connect you with them on our website. So go to WCCO.com slash accomplish MN. Learn all about how you can sign the flag and support us and our military. Indeed. It's a wonderful cause. Indeed. Absolutely. Uh, and when we talk about how big it was, Angela said the crowd were like, whoa. I know. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy to know where they're going to fly, because I was just thinking to myself when she was doing it. I didn't know That's where. That's what she was thinking, and maybe Fort Snelling. Big yeah. flagpole, for sure. All right, uh, if you want to sign that flag, come by and see us. Uh, it's very easy to find us. We're at the corner of Carnes and Nelson. We are right in front of the grandstand. You can't miss us, so we uh, look forward to seeing you, and we look forward to uh, your help signing the flag. Well, if you don't know where we are, if you haven't been to the fair yet, this is where you need to go to come see us. WCCO at the State Fair is at Carnes and Nelson. It's right across from the DNR building, so be sure to check us out. And we hope you'll stop by and visit us because inside of our booth, you can help us with our More Than Names campaign. You can be a part of our attempt to break a world record. That is right, 150,000 signatures on a huge flag. It's our way to say thank you to all of the military men and women who serve. So those of you in the crowd, please go check it out. We're also helping raise money for the Minnesotans Military Appreciation Fund, which gives grants to Minnesota service men and women and their families. So if you can't make it to the fair, and you still want to sign the flag, that is A-OK. -okay. You can sign it online on our website. Each signature will be printed and added to the flag. To learn more about how you can uh, sign your name on the flag or even make a donation to the Minnesota Military Appreciation Fund, just go to wccocom accomplish MN, and that flag is going to be so big, 323 panels. I believe it's 102 feet by 76 feet. I might not have those numbers exactly correct, but it's really big. A replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. is coming to the Twin Cities this week. The Wall That Heals is coming as part of the Minnesotans Military Appreciation Fund Say Thanks Day celebration. You can see the wall at base camp at Fort Snelling Wednesday through Saturday. More than a thousand Minnesota names on the wall will be read in a ceremony on Friday. Well, this year marks the 40th anniversary of the Vietnam War coming to an end. And for the next few days, a replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. is on display in the Twin Cities. Fox 9's Jonathan Show with a preview tonight. And Jonathan, it was finally our turn to have a look at this wall. Yeah, Kelsey, this, this is actually a traveling wall with a mobile museum that's constantly on the move across the country. It's been to Minnesota before, but it doesn't get here that often. So seeing it again in our backyard is pretty special. On the road to remembrance. We had dozens of motorcyclists 
escort us in from the state line this uh, morning. There are people like Bill Erickson and his Minnesota Patriot Guard. I was fortunate enough and honored enough to be part of the escort. Guiding the precious cargo in the semi-truck. Tim Tates and his crew unload, then rebuild 250 feet of powder-coated aluminum. A little over five feet tall at its center point. A half-scale replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., featuring more than 58,000 names, 1,075 from Minnesota. Michael A. Freezy, Dennis J. Gotti. Names like 31-year-old Army medic Ronald Krebsbach from St. Paul. I've seen this once before, but it's a place where I can come and see my dad's name. His daughter Angela was born one month after he was killed during the Vietnam War. And he went to attend to a soldier who had been wounded and in the process of doing so he was shot by a sniper and killed. This is where she can reach out to a father she's never met and find peace. Wish he was here. Even with the backlog and waiting list across the country, the Minnesotans Military Appreciation Foundation helped bring this traveling wall to Fort Snelling for the very first time. So one of those things we try to get everywhere, but we can't be there. Along with the wall, the truck turns into a mobile museum featuring mementos and memories from the past. The hope is the next generation appreciates the sacrifice. So obviously just with the passage of time, you know, there's a tendency for, to, you know, to forget about things that happened in the past. And after this four day stop in the Twin Cities, the wall and mobile museum will be on the road again, heading to another destination to help another community heal and remember. Starting tomorrow, the wall will officially be open free to the public at Fort Snelling's base camp 24-7 until Sunday. For a full list of scheduled events, go to our Fox 9 app. Mm -hmm. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Jonathan. Well, we want to thank everyone who's come out to sign our More Than Names flag over the summer at several Twins, Vikings games, and the State Fair, along with Fort Snelling. We have a ton of signatures so far, but we do still have a little work left to do. We're trying to get 150,000 signatures as a way of saluting our military members and their families by creating this record-breaking flag. Another way you can help is by donating to the Mil Minnesotans Military Appreciation Fund. Joining me now is Air Force Federal and MMAF co-founder, General Denny Schulstead. Uh, Denny, thanks so much for coming in. Oh, delighted to be here, and thank you to WCCO for doing this. Absolutely. So we're chatting a little bit about the fund, and one thing that struck me is this isn't a government organization. This is your friends and neighbors. This, these are Minnesotans saying thanks. Absolutely. When we give a check and a letter of appreciation to somebody, we say this is not from the military, this is not from the government, this is from the people of Minnesota saying thank you for serving. And how big is the military uh, uh, presence here in Minnesota. How many Minnesotans are going over and, and serving? We have 18,500 Minnesota people who are in the Guard and Reserve and several thousand others who are serving in active duty. Most of them have served in a combat area after 9-11. We've got those phones going right now, too. Uh, why is it so important for you to say thank you? When, uh, when people now serve in the military, they're all volunteers. They're volunteers to go serve in a nasty place where it's hot, where it's dangerous, and and all of these people are volunteers. None of them have been drafted. And uh, it's important to thank them for risking their lives. 64 of them haven't come home at all. Many others came home without an arm or a leg or with a brain damage. Yeah, it, it, it's not just uh, uh, members that were lost in battle or injured that you're helping. I mean, this is, you're helping tons of Minnesotans that were over there serving. Absolutely. When somebody is sent into a combat area now, they go for about a year. They're missing birthdays, they're missing anniversaries, they're missing holidays, they're missing the birth of their son or daughter. They're postponing their weddings. They're making huge sacrifices. And it was Gene Set who had the idea of raising millions of dollars so that we could say thank you to these people by giving them a check for anywhere from $500 up to $10,000 for serving in a combat area. And we've got that number on your screen if you want to call right now, 1-800-542-9226. And, and Danny, what is some of the feedback that you've gotten from these military members and the families that you've been able to help? It's absolutely incredible. Incredible. Uh, we will sometimes give a check for $5,000 to an individual. They'll say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And there's a person without a leg. Just imagine that. It's a person who uh, has been away from home for over a year, and they've missed many, many different uh, significant things in their lives. They've risked their lives, and 
This is our way of saying thank you. We're the only state in America doing it. We have now given yeah. about 16,000 grants, totaling about $10 million, and we can be very proud of Minnesota for saying thank you to their service members. Yeah, there's something about Minnesotans. We, we want to give back. We want to help out. So let's yes. do that right now. Danny, thanks so much. Again, the number to donate is on your screen. Just call 1-800-542-9222. Two, six, or you can donate online at WCCO.com slash accomplish MN. You can also show your support for our more than names flag. You can go ahead and sign that online. We are trying to get 150,000 signatures as another way to say thank you to our military members and their families. That flag will be at the National Sports Center in Blaine on Saturday for the Minnesota United game against the New York Cosmos. You can also sign the flag digitally from your smartphone or tablet. WCCO co.com slash accomplish mn keep calling be right back if you stop by the wcco booth during the state fair we hope that you have the chance to sign our more than names flag it's a way to salute minnesota military members and their families we're trying to get 150,000 signatures to break a world record since 2001, more than 35,000 Minnesotans have served in combat. The Minnesotans Military Appreciation Fund has helped many of them, including the family of Edward Hergott, who friends called Jim. The 20-year-old from Shakopee was the first Minnesotan to die in the war in Iraq. And for the first time, his mother, Marsha, sat down with our Susan Elizabeth Littlefield because she wanted to go on the record about a group who was near to her heart. That was in Kuwait, uh, waiting to go into Iraq. It's been 12 years since her baby boy slept in this bed. Now, the brave mama's boy from Shakopee rests here. She says it hits her in waves. Seeing my oldest grandson doing something that my son would have done or an expression on their face or something like that. Jim enlisted after 9-11. The car aficionado's job was to drive a tank in Iraq. His peers praised his work. He said he could drive that and turn around like a dime. He says that was like his race car, was that tank. So he was pretty amazing. And a tank is where his life came to an end. A sniper hit him in the neck as he raised his head out from the vehicle. We had heard on the news, WCCO News, you know, the night before that a soldier had been killed at the National Museum, but never thought it would be our son. Yeah, there was a red van that pulled up beside our house and we saw who was walking up and it's like I didn't want to let him in the doors. Jim was the first Minnesotan to die in the war in Iraq. The family cut the phone lines and gathered at home. The funeral grew crowds even too large for the church, supporting the family with their presence. Later, they got another type of support. All of a sudden, a check arrived in the mail, one for my husband, one for me. The money was from Minnesota's Military Appreciation Fund a group who cuts a check to every returning soldier who applies for one, and to families whose service members never come home. It can be devastating to the pocketbook, you know? I mean, just devastating for some people because it's the loss of an income, you know? So, uh, yes, a, a check is a nice thing, you know, a way to support them. So moved by the group and the mission, she now volunteers, helping raise money so they can write checks. May it be a dollar, five dollars, ten, you know, whatever you can give. You know, just say a thank you to the soldiers. Giving what you can. After all, isn't that what sacrifice is all about? He was such a giver that, you know, I decided that that's what I had to do, is, you know, work in his place. <laughs> As we explained, the MMAF helps service members and their families with cash grants, service members who have served in active combat. Now, if you would like to be a giver, you might recognize this face right here. This is Marsha, Jim's mom, and she is here in our phone bank, and she would love to be answering one of your calls. If you want to call, the number is 1-800-542-9226, or you can go to WCCO.com slash accomplish MN. Well, Marsha was so eloquent talking about Jim and how much it means. She's, she's she was. She was person. awesome. Yeah, so we appreciate her being here today, and thank you, Susan Elizabeth. That's hard to do. Uh, we want to also remind you that our More Than Names flag is going to be out and about this weekend with two opportunities for you to stop by and be part of our record-breaking attempt. On Saturday, it's going to be at the Minnesota United soccer game in Blaine. 
Then on Sunday, it will be in Richfield at the Open Streets event. That takes place on Penn Avenue between 62nd and 76th Street. So stop by if you can. If you can't, you can still be part of this. You can sign online really simply. Just go to WCCO.com and click the Sign the Flag tab at the top of our homepage. So we appreciate your phone calls today. We appreciate your help with the flag project as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, uh, our Giants More Than Names flag has been uh, to the State Fair and it's been to events all around the metro area. It is all part of an effort to say thank you to the men and women serving our country. Last weekend, visitors at the Wall That Heals display at Fort Snelling added their signatures to the flag. We're trying to get 150,000 signatures to break a world record. Since 2001, more than 35,000 Minnesotans have served in combat, and among them, Scott Adams from St. Bonifacius. He's been in combat six different times. His final mission left him with burns, PTSD, a broken back, and blood clots. And as Susan Elizabeth Littlefield shows us, he is now joining forces with the Minnesota group and hopes that you will do the same. A family photo makes it all look okay. But life has been anything but okay for the past eight years. I'm an adrenaline junkie. And that's how he ended up in the Army, riding in a Humvee in Iraq. It was January 2007. The vehicle blew up, it came down. They opened the vehicle door, all that oxygen came in. I lit up like a candle. Um, I fell out of the vehicle, jumped up and started running. And uh, I remember the screaming. Uh, I don't remember the pain. I looked at my hands, this one looked normal, and this one was like a movie, Freddy Krueger movie, it was all red and, and uh, no skin left on it. One of my soldiers tackled me and uh, they put me out with a fire extinguisher. And like that, the firefighter and soldier became a patient. Two years at a burn hospital in Texas. His family lived in a two room unit nearby. No family income, as his wife nursed him. I was too proud. And I kept saying, you know, no, we'll get by. Then a friend told him about Minnesota's Military Assistance Fund, MMAF. Within 72 hours, they awarded me a $10,000 grant. Next day, serviced it. Scott's family used the money to move back to Minnesota, where the cool climate could help his burns heal and their heavy hearts could be home. It's Minnesotans taking care of Minnesotans. The group cuts a check to every soldier who returns home from war. They get the money from donations. You just need to know that the money is going and changing and impacting a life of a Minnesotan and that Minnesota family. PTSD and memory loss are now part of Scott's reality, but he battles the pain, spending free moments volunteering for MMAF because he says they offer honor to those who have offered up their all. It goes a long way. It changes and affects families and lives. It saves families and lives. We are live out here with Scott Adams and his wife, Susie. They are out here answering your calls in hopes that they can pass on the gift that they've been given to others. You can help here by donating to the phone bank, Minnesotans Military Appreciation Fund. The fund helps service members, as you saw, like the Adams and their families, with cash grants, money. They say they need so desperately. We've got volunteers in the studio here today, some of them service members themselves with each one. A very important story. The number you can call is on your screen, 1-800-542-9226, or you can just go to WCCO.com, accomplish MN. Pretty we just lost you for a little bit there, Susan Elizabeth, but I'm sure you were saying pretty amazing and a big thank you to Scott and all those volunteers who are here today. For yes, they would love cause. to take your calls. Absolutely. Thank you.